Hi, and welcome to this Faber-Cassell Design Memory Craft tutorial on dry embossing a stamped image. Today we'll be using the Aquarelle and Ink Mix and Match Media set in red, the Mix and Match Media Aquarelles and Ink set in green, Penny Black's Flowers Sweet Transparent set, and also Penny Black's Transparent Set Wishes. We will be making this card here. It's a little bit difficult to see on the video, but the flowers and the buds have all been raised using a dry embossing technique. I've also chosen to use white pearl card because the watercolours react differently on this type of paper. I'm using this flower here, a memento ink. I place my stamp on the acrylic block and ink with the memento tuxedo black ink. I then press firmly on the card to give me the image. As you can see here. Now I'm going to take the red set of pens and pencils and also the green set to colour the leaves and the petals. First of all I'm going to take 119 and I'm going to apply a medium to light pressure and colour over all the petals and all the buds. Don't worry too much if you miss out any slight areas because once you rub over these with some water and a brush it will even out. Once you have completely covered with the first colour I'm then going to use 125 and go from the centre of the petal outwards towards the edge but not going all the way. Again applying a medium pressure and not being too fussy about how I'm colouring because it will be blended afterwards. I repeat this process for each petal, each bud on each flower. Then finally I go in with the darkest colour 126 and again from the base of the petal not working out quite as far again just add a bit of the darker shade. Because I'm working on pearlised paper the colour will actually sit on top more once I add the water so you get a very subtle blended look and so the darkness of these colours will fade considerably. You may find that if you try different types of paper the effects that you get will be different. I then take my watercolour brush and add some water but I don't want too much water so I take off the excess with my fingers and then using a very light circular brushing motion towards the outside of the petals I blend the colours together. All the time I'm making sure I'm going in the direction of the petals. You can add as much or as little water as you want to get a lighter or darker effect. Because the ink sits on top of the paper you have plenty of time to work with it. Just remember not to over wet your brush. I wanted a little bit darker edging to the centres of the petals so I've now taken the big brush marker and I'm very lightly adding a bit of colour and then blending in with my finger. This is actually deep scarlet red, number 219. I think it's great how all the pencils and the inks work so well together. I'm now going to take the greens. And I'm going to start with 166 
and just lightly colour the tips and it's slightly into the edges of where I think they will be highlighting on the leaves. Once I've done this, I'm then going to go in with 168 and finish in the areas that I have not coloured with a slightly darker shade. Again, applying a light to medium pressure. If you make any mistakes, you can easily rub them out with a rubber. Again, I'm going to wet my brush, take off the excess water and blend in the two colours. Once I have done this, I'm then going to take the May Green Big Brush Marker and do the same as I did with the red, add to the tip, the actual inside tip of the leaf and then just brush out with my finger, blending in to add a darker shade. This is marker number 170. Once this is finished, I can then cut out around the edge of the design and I'm going to leave a slight white border. I'm then going to take some 10 second acrylic mats and foam pads to begin the drying bossing. I place down my acrylic mat and I'm going to use these 10 second embossing tools, first the ones with the pointy edge. I place my foam mat underneath my project and then I press down with the pointy edge and you can just about see where it has come through on the wrong side. This will actually act as a guide when we come to emboss the other side as to where the actual flower petals are. So I go all the way around the petal, pressing quite firmly. Once I've done this, you can see that there is actually an edge showing where the petal is. I then take the rounded tools and with a circular motion I apply pressure to the area inside the petal. This stretches the paper and forces it to bulge out on the correct side, giving dimension to the project. You can see here that it's begin to raise. Then I take away the foam mat and I go over again with the pointed tool. This helps to add definition to the actual petal edges. And so it shows that the actual flower itself is the only part that is raised and embossed. The leaves will lie flatter and it will look much better by finishing off like this. As you can see here, the petals are now raised. I repeat this process for all of the buds. Once I've finished this, I then take some embossing paste. If you don't have any embossing paste, you can use light household filler and just fill in the areas that you have stretched. This way, when you place it on the card, they will not cave in and leave it to dry. Once you've done this, we're then going to do the ribbon so that it matches perfectly with the flower. I've taken my big brush marker. I'm going to spritz that with some water 
and then I'm going to scrunch up my ribbon until it's completely covered in the dye from the ink from the pen. You can actually at this stage dry off the, the ribbon, this is actually seam binding, using a heat gun. Once you've done that, you can then use a sewing machine to ruche it onto your card. I've then taken my sentiment from the wishes set. I'm going to ink it with Versafine ink and place the sentiment in the bottom corner of my card. I've also stitched the patterned paper onto the card base. Then finally I take some glue place it around my stamped image and then I tuck the stem underneath the ribbon and firmly apply down to the card to finish it off. And there you have it, one embossed card. Here are the materials that have been used in this project. Thank you for watching. For further inspiration, please visit my blog at candronicucardcraft.blogspot.co.uk.